good morning students today we are going to start the next chapter next file that is nematoda first regarding its name its name originate from greek uh, nema nema that part that portion means thread what is that thread thread and idos means four thread four organisms they are nematoda that term originate from greek and uh, the members of this phylum all are round worms and also they have cosmopolitan distribution cosmopolitan distribution means it has a wide distribution then uh, cell and features regarding the habit and habitat Uh, it is parasitic on plants and animals. Parasitic on plants and animals, and they are found in moist terrestrial environment. Moist terrestrial environment. Then regarding the body, ah, uh, body is cylindrical body. Cylindrical, cylindrical shape. We know how it looks like. and it is elongated cylindrical and elongated and also tapering at both ends how is it tapering at the both ends this is a body and also it is triploblastic triploblastic means body consists of three layers and also the body is unsegmented body is unsegmented then we are going to see which are the layers body layers which are ah they are mainly cuticle this much is cuticle and below this is epidermis and ah uh, below that epidermis uh, there there lies muscle layers longitudinal is it uh, longitudinal muscle layers are there okay and uh, then if you are going going in detail then we can see that regarding the cuticle cuticles uh, expanded yeah, image is shown here cuticle in turn has many layers it is multi layer which are the layers of the cuticle of this nematodes ah uh, outer uh, epicuticle this region is epicuticle then below that a cortex is there and below the cortex a median layer is there and below the median layer a basal layer is there this much is <coughs> cuticle cuticle of nematode bone okay then uh, regarding the symmetry anterior end is radial symmetry radial symmetry we know how it lies radial means equal half uh, if we cut through any plane that passing through a central axis that is radial symmetry so its anterior end is end is radially symmetrical but uh, most of the body and organ systems and we go to its internal system body and its organ system what is the symmetry symmetry is bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry means only two similar halves is possible then mouth regarding the mouth of this uh, phylum uh, it is terminal okay terminal and uh, anteriorly present and it is surrounded by lips and sensilla sensilla for sensing spray or its food uh, so smoke is surrounded by lips and sensilla then next coelom uh, what's the speciality of coelom ah coelom it is a pseudo coel no true coelom coelom what is coelom coelom means body cavity so before that we need to understand very clearly between a uh, coelom coelom and pseudo coel first we are taking the case of a coelom a coelom here we can see that uh, outer body covering is there is part of ectoderm 
and inner to this mesoderm, this red portion, and uh, inner to this endoderm. Uh, endoderm of that endoderm, digestive tract, everything is developing. This is a normal A coelom. There is no space, vacant space. So they are called A coelom. And coelom, coelom means body cavity is there. Where it is present? Ah, here outer uh, ectoderm is there. And inner to this mesoderm is there. Uh, here, look here. Ah, uh, here there is a space is present. That space happens uh, as a splitting inside the mesoderm. Inside the mesoderm as a split, it occurs. So that type of serum is called a true serum. So in this case, you can see that the space is lined externally and internally by mesoderm itself. So, it's outside and inner side, both sides, we can see the mesoderm region itself. So, that is coelom. Then coming to pseudocelom, we can see the difference here also. Coelom is present, but it, it doesn't uh, occur inside the mesoderm. Instead, where it is found, uh, it is found between the endoderm and mesoderm. So, it is externally lined by mesoderm and internally lined by endoderm. Okay. So, I think uh, it's very clear to you what is coelom and pseudocelom. And so, in this phylum, the coelom is pseudocelom. It's no coelom. And uh, the pseudocelom is filled with a fluid. And the function of that fluid is hydrostatic, give uh, a support for the body. And uh, in that coelom, uh, no circulatory cells are present. And these are the peculiarities of the coelom. Then cilia. Cilia. Regarding the cilia, generally cilia are absent in this phylum. Uh, but in some primitive species, uh, they have cilia. Uh, they have cilium uh, in gastrodermal cells. Then regarding the nervous system. Coming to the nervous system. Ah, here we can see the nervous system in the form of a ring of nervous tissue. Where we can see that? Here, a ring of nervous tissue is there. And from that ring, yeah, raises two, uh, not two, one dorsal and one ventral nerve. Bone. So, the nerve tissue exists in the form of a ring and from that ring emerge two nerve bones. One is dorsal and the other is ventral. This is about its nervous system. Then respiratory and circulatory system are totally absent. A reproductive aspect, they are gonochoric. Gonochoric means sexes are separate. But hermaphrodites also present. Hermaphrodite means sexes, both sexes are present in single individual. Now, and also sexual dimorphism is present. Usually the males are smaller. And that's an important feature of this phylum. All the males, uh, males are smaller than females. And so far, uh, 20,000 species have described under this phylum. So, next we are going to see the classification. Nematoda is divided into two classes. Cisernentia and Adenophoria. Cisernentia is otherwise called Phasmedia. Cisernentia and Adenophoria. Uh, Cisernentia is otherwise called Phasmedia. Next, uh, we are going to see the... Features of Sisan India or First Media. Uh, here, first point is regarding in the habit and habitat. They are mostly parasitic. Parasitic means uh, it uh, is exploiting its host. Um, then, some are free living in soil and some are terrestrial also. Then, uh, two important features of this class are presence of amphids and fasces. We need to understand what is amphids and also this can be assessed one more question. Amphid. Amphid are uh, poor like region and it, it is located, oh, maybe, secondly I put it here. 
uh, the pore like region and that pore like region is located in the lateral legs located in the lateral legs they are called the anthids then next phasmids what are phasmids phasmids here we can see the phasmids they are paired structures uh, two are here only one can be uh, visible on this picture uh, it is found in the tail region tail region uh, it is a unicellular gland it is chemosensory and also uh, it has it has a function of secretion and excretion and, uh, and this structure is well developed only in parasitic forms. It's about fast. Then it's what about its epidermal cells? Epidermal cells of this uh, uh, in India. Ah, epidermal cells are uni or multinucleated. Uninucleated cells also there and multinucleated cells. Then regarding the excretion, excretion. Excretory glands and canals present for eliminating the body waste. Then coming to reproduction. Reproduction uh, in the case of male only one testis is found in this case. Okay. In the case of uh, Susanetia. Examples are Ascaris. Ascaris is this one. Enderobius. Enderobius is also shown here. Uh, which area are examples. Next class is adenophoria. Next class of nematoda is adenophoria. Regarding habit and habitat, they are again free living. Then habitat, uh, they, are found, they are found in marine ecosystem uh, and also in fresh and terrestrial. So, almost everywhere we can uh, see this organisms. Then amphids, regarding the amphids, amphids, what it is, I already explained to you. Amphids are simply, it is located behind the lips and simply they are uh, tube-like invaginations of the cuticle. Amphids are this, are simply they are the invagination, invaginations of the cuticle. And uh, in this case, it is present one on each side of the head of this organ. Uh, that's about the amphids and its function is mechano and chemosensory mechanical uh, stimuli uh, it sends and also chemical uh, stimuli also it sends amphids then phasmids uh, phasmids phasmids are uh, absent in adenophoria then epidermal cells epidermal cells uh, is uninucleated in the case of adenophoria in the case of Susan India, uni and multinucleated epidermal cells are present. Excretion, excretory glands and canal, glands present but canals are absent. Reproductory aspects, uh, male uh, here has two testes. And what about the food? Uh, food, uh, is food are of microorganisms and also detritus. Detritus means uh, waste substance. Examples are Ketosoma, Epsilonima. Epsilonima feature is shown here. Mermis, Tychinella are its examples. So, next we are going to see the examples of Sisan India mainly. So, Sisan India or Fast Media. Very, very important. Each examples are very important. Each examples, from each examples, its life cycle, pathogenicity, all those areas can be asked as questions for your examination and also the sexual dimorphism. These are the important areas. Okay. Ascaris. Regarding the habit and habitat, first of all, it is found in the intestine of man. Dogs, cats, pigs, hogs, and also it's cosmopolitan in distribution. And its life cycle, life cycle uh, finish uh, within a single host. And it is called the common round worm. Common round worm in man. Uh, okay, and that common round worm is a um, scientific name is Ascaris lubricoids. Ascaris 
numeric coins. How it appears? Appearance milky white in color and sexual dimorphism is present. So we can see that's dimorphism. Look, this is female and this is male. Female is uh, more uh, in length than the male. Female is 40 to 50 centimeter in length, but male is only 30 centimeter. And the posterior end of uh, female is straight, but in the case of male it is curved. And uh, next difference is uh, the anus and genital pore are separate in the case of the case of females. You can see that anus is this one and genital pore. They are separate. A genital pore is found almost mid-ventrally mid and a water distance from the anterior. But in the case of male, there is no separate uh, opening. Uh, instead of this is common, single opening for eliminating the base and also for uh, secreting the sex cells. That is cloaca. Common opening is otherwise called cloaca. Then... Uh, Pineal setae. Pineal setae is present only in the case of males. It is absent in females. These are the difference. Very important question. Sexual dimorphism in between ascaris male and female. Next is features. Just we can go and see that. Body is cylindrical. Elongated. Tapering at the both ends. And along its body... Uh, four lines are present. One line is uh, dorsal, one line is ventral, and two lines are lateral. In that way, four lines are present. Mouth is at the anterior extremity. And it is a triangular opening guarded by broad lips. And the outer surface of each lips bears outgrowth called papillae. Okay. And uh, uh, in addition to that a special papillae called amphids are also present. They are chemo reception in function. Where amphids, amphids are here. They are also additional papillae. Their fun its function is chemo reception. And uh, just behind the mouth uh, on its ventral side uh, is present the excretory pore. Excretory pore, pore. And the body wall, regarding the body wall of the ascaris, three layers are present. Uh, as, uh, same as uh, we have steps in the case of its uh, general seven features in the beginning of this chapter. Three layers are present. Outer cuticle and below that epidermis and below the epidermis and inner layer of longitudinal muscle layer. And body cavity is pseudocy. It's about the features. So also that uh, um, lips and mouth. Then going to see the reproduction life cycle. During copulation, copulation means the act of exchanging or, a, or a act of deposit, depositing sperms in the body of female. Okay, that is uh, during copulation, the male, male, as may ask, that is male and the female, its appearance, everything is um, uh, we have understand by this time. So, uh, while uh, I am explaining about their uh, reproduction, you need to imagine. Its appearance in your mind. Okay. So the male inserts the pineal seta. Pineal seta, we know where it is present, the posterior and near to the tail. Uh, posterior and uh, uh, The male insert the pineal seta, male and female, insert the pineal seta into the vagina. Vagina means opening, uh, of genital opening of the female. Uh, vagina to the vagina. He inserted the pineal CTA and deposit the sperms. And uh, up, then uh, as the sperm reaches the body of female, fertilization happens. And uh, that fertilized egg is covered by a shell made of cuticle. Clear? Okay. And in that way, a single female uh, worm can produce up to about 2 lakh eggs per day. 
the act matches its uh, peak quantity. Peak quantity means reproductive capacity. And then uh, after the fertilization, the uh, these eggs are laid down in the intestine, and then this fertilized egg are passed out through the fecal matter of the host. Okay, and in that way it reaches the soil. And in the soil, the eggs remain alive for several days. And uh, during this period, the embryo develops to form a rapidly for larvae, and uh, which remains in the egg shell, that cutic plant shell. And its further development takes place when the egg are transmitted to a transmitted to a new host since there is no intermediate host here there is no intermediate host so the transmission of this egg to a new host how can it um, how can it occur uh, by direct ingestion how that direct ingestion is happening uh, if we happen to have some contaminated food or water the worm that Rabbity form worm that um, rabbity form uh, ah, okay that uh, worm present in the contaminated food and water through our mouth uh, it reaches our intestine okay then after reaching the intestine the egg shells are digested because of our intestinal enzymes and the and uh, the second stage of rabbity form larvae is liberated at the intestine. The, the second stage means it loses its shell, uh, cuticular shell. And that second stage la rabbitiform larvae penetrate, that is, penetrate the intestinal wall and it enters hepatic portal uh, system. Means it is a um, blood vessel that carry, um, it opens, um, ca uh, carry blood from intestine to the liver. In the same to the liver and from the liver from the liver the parasite reaches the heart from the liver the parasite reaches the heart and from the heart it reaches the lungs lungs and what um, located uh, somewhere here and uh, in the liver further development happens and it's molting. Molting means metamorphosis. It's for the uh, development only that uh, happens. Happens that uh, development occurs in the alveoli. Alveoli means small that um, uh, small uh, rape, I don't know. Alve um, small um, bulb bulbous like air sacs that present in the lungs are called the alveoli. Oh, okay. That in that alveoli, they undergo further development. Okay, and then what they do after further development from the alveoli of the lungs, it starts its journey again from the alveoli. I think the lung structure is clear to you, so that's why I'm telling. Ah, from the alveoli ah, to the trachea. Pharynx, it again reaches the esophagus. So esophagus. From to the esophagus, that green, green, that esophagus, it reach again the intestine. This long journey of the larvae from the intestine and uh, passing through from the intestine itself, yeah, that journey starts. From the intestine passing through several vital organs and finally again it comes back to the intestine second time. So such migration is called the extra intestinal migration. And in the intestine uh, after the extra intestinal migration that means it's a second infestation of the intestine. After that uh, the Larvae again undergo small thing and develop into the adult. So it make a tour through 
throughout the body. First, initially, as we have, as we take the contaminant food, it um, initially reaches the intestine, and from the intestine, it again reaches the liver. From liver uh, to heart and finally lungs. From the lungs, uh, in the alveoli, further development happens. From the alveoli, again it passes out through the trachea, pharynx, and pass, uh, reaches the esophagus. From the esophagus to the intestine, it reaches the intestine a second time. It's extra intestinal, extra intestinal migration. Important, extra, extra intestinal migration. That way also, question can become what is extra intestinal migration? It's infestation. Uh, uh, occurs twice, second, two times the same organ. That type of migration is called extra intestinal migration. Okay, then parasitic adaptations. Parasitic adaptations, cuticle is there. It is an adaptation that, uh, that helps that form to resist adverse conditions, to resist the digestive action. The next uh, parasitic adaptation is the presence of muscular and a sectorial pharynx. Uh, that structure helps the organisms to suck the food, food from the host. Uh, then the third parasitic adaptation is the an extra intestinal migration. Uh, through this uh, mode of migration, it, uh, that enables the worm to reinfect the, infect, re -infect the host. Then and also, um, two lakh, about 2 lakh eggs are produced uh, laid by the females per day. So, abundant uh, reproductive, um, high fecundity. It helps the uh, sustain, successful uh, sustenance of its population, transmission from one host to another. And the eggs are highly resistant. So, it can, um, because of the presence of the cuticle shell, it can remain alive in the soil for several days. An endoparasitic mode of life means it is found inside the body of course. So, no need of uh, organs for locomotion, circulation and respiration. So, this also can be, uh, as I said, separate question. Parasitic adaptations of ascaris. Then we are going to see the pathogenicity of ascaris. Uh, the disease caused by uh, ascaris is ascariasis. And children are mostly affected. Pathological uh, effects uh, is extra intestinal migration is very harmful because as it is um, making it um, uh, taking a tour throughout the body, it is causing harm to many internal vital organs uh, uh, by causing hemorrhage means bleeding in the internal organs. Injuries in the vital organs. Inflammations also can be happen. And adult worms causes enteritis. Enteritis means, I will show you. Uh, enteritis means the inflammation of the small intestine. Uh, this is the enteritis. Adult worm can cause enteritis in human. Uh, sometimes appendicitis and also peritonitis. Also, in, in uh, uh, human peritonitis means that also inflammation, inflammation in the peritoneum. Peritoneum means it is the lining of the inner wall of abdomen. It is a lining where, uh, where, where that present in the inner wall of abdomen. Okay. A massive in infection. Uh, that massive infection may lead to death of the organs. Organism is the host. Next is anylosoma. is also an example of Phasmidia. Anylostoma habitat. Anylostoma picture uh, is shown here. Habitat. Habitat 2 T is here. Only one thing. Um, it is found in the intestine of various uh, vertebrates. Common name is called hookworm. Uh, hookworm of man is called the anylostoma duodenale. And here in this case also a sexual dimorphism is present. Uh, sexual dimorphism also in this picture itself. Uh, we can explain that. Um, ten females are longer than male. 
10 to 30 millimeter in length in the case of female. Males are only 8 to 8 to 11 millimeter. Bursa, bursa in an expanded fan like structure uh, is present at the posterior end in the case of male. And the structure helps. What is the function of bursa? Bursa can also be asked as one more question. Bursa helps in copulation. And uh, that uh, this bursa is supported by bursal rays. It is supported by bursal rays. Uh, and this bursa is absent in the case of female. Um, the anterior end of both male and female are alike uh, with a terminal mouth. Then interaction, how it interacts with the host. Adult worm, uh, it cling to the intestinal wall and suck the host blood. The buccal cavity of this worm have many cutting plates. That cutting plates is provided with the teeth. And also this uh, oral armature, this teeth uh, helps that worm to make wounds in the intestinal wall of the host. And uh, the blood that oozes out from that wound are feed, feed by the worms. Then regarding its reproduction. The bursa, using the bursa. Uh, uh, it transfers the sperms into the vulva of the female. B U L B A vulva of the female. Okay. Uh, and that um, exchange everything happened in the lymphatic vessel, lymph system of the host. And that fertilized egg pass out the host body through fecal matter. Okay. Then what happens? Ah, that X had just form again. Ah, here also the larva is rabbit form larva in the soil. And this larva undergoes molting twice and become infective. And this stage it is capable to survive in the soil for several days. And how it infect the host? Uh, if a host uh, walk without food, that means he walks barefooted in the soil, contaminated with this larvae. The larvae enters his body by penetrating the skin and cause itch in his body skin. And then the life cell life cycle progresses in in an Ah, indirect migratory pathway similar, just similar as in the case of us guys. That is, the larvae enters into his body, that force, enters his blood uh, um, circulatory system, and from uh, means that hurt, circulatory system means it finally enters the heart, and from the heart it will reach lungs, uh, from the lines, uh, then uh, reach alveoli, and uh, from the alveoli, it again travels back through trachea, uh, pharynx, esophagus, and finally reaches the intestine. And the intestine larvae undergoes again molting and maturing to the adult. It's a life cycle. Mm, pathogenicity. Pathogenicity is caused by this worm is called an anylostomiasis. Anylo and it can live in the intestine for 2 to 5 years. How many years? 2 to 5 years it can live in the intestine. And it causes injury to the intestinal mucosa. Uh, yeah, the, during the time it exists in the intestine, it causes wounds in the intestinal mucosa. And blood will continuously lost from the body of host and it results in anemia. And uh, so many internal vital organs also may get wounded and cause hemorrhage. And general declining health will occur ultimately in the case of infective intuitions. How can we prevent preventive measures of this one? Ah, by the sanitary disposal of fecus and also avoid walking barefooted 
and also drugs can also be used uh, for example for the drugs are carbon tetrachloride uh, is there then tetrachloroethylene uh, like very so many drugs also there next enterobius enterobius also uh, an example for as media season india okay it's i will show the image of this one this is the enterobius its common name is pinworm it is called a pinworm or seed worm or thread worm common species is enterobius vermicularis then its habitat adult worms are found in the intestine cecum and vermiform appendix cecum means beginning of the large intestine then appearance regarding the appearance ah, it is small creamy white i have shown you that the small creamy white colored creature worm its gonochoric means sexes are separate exhibit sexual dimorphism a sexual dimorphism is a common feature of nematoda phytum so we can go and see that nematoda or the ancestor no, it is picture area uh so picture actually not any picture anyway i will uh, tell you what is the dif difference between female and male of male in this case also uh, females are lengthier than male females 10 mm in length males are only 5 mm females are more in number but uh males are less in number females tail end is straight and uh, is similar to other forms uh males tail end is curved in the case of female bursa and spicules absent but in the case of male it is present then cuticular expansion uh, is present in the anterior end in the case of females but it is absent in the case of me uh this about the uh, what uh, sexual dimorphism then regarding the mouth mouth is terminal with a small three small lips then didelphic female didelphic means what females have two uterus life cycle life cycle it is very simple and direct there is no intermediate host um then we can go and see what's happening in the case of this um uh endropius during night time um the adult worm that present in the intestine of the host it crawl to his anal portion anal portion that area that uh, skin is called peri anal skin skin region near to the anus the female crawls out to the peri anal skin and it uh, deposit eggs there around 10000 eggs may the female lay and after laying the egg female dies out because of the body uh, ah dies out uh, then after that because of the body temperature that egg egg develops to become infective juveniles larva juveniles and if that person uh, each his body part there somehow it may enter into his nails and again it may pass to his mouth and again can reach to his intestine the after it's reaching the intestine it can go on up to an adult within one month this is one way another chance also there that is uh, the worm female worm after crawling and reaches the perianal region a uh, female laid a egg and the other female dies out but that egg hatch and the juvenile uh, it moves its crawl back into the intestine of the host uh, through the anus and reaches the intestine and develops into adult there 
that type of infection is called a retro infection means uh, from the host body it again uh, move into the body of host and uh, infecting the same host itself so that is called a retro infection then this is our life cycle then pathogenicity uh, it causes irritation in the perianal region uh, then uh, uh, scratching uh, may feel in the affected areas and uh, and the because of the scratching that worms enters in the nails of the host uh, and may lead to the infection of the that say host again as the uh, larvae caught in inside the nails happen to be ingested through this mouth and also it causes inflammation in the colon and appendix of the uh, host and may lead to loss of appetite for the host in women it causes irritation in the vagina these are the pathogens all these pathogens it is also very 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 important in the case of each one and the next one is called butcher area butcher area also an example for the class phasmidia it's a filarial worms picture is given here uh, it's called butcher area bank of the uh, it causes filariasis the disease caused by this worm is called filariasis it is a digenetic parasite digenetic parasite means uh, two uh, host is there man is an elephant host and mosquitoes are the intermediate host okay then distribution uh, it is usually found in tropical areas morphology we can see it's a thread like sexual dimorphism is present here uh, it is live in the lymph ducts and uh, lymph ducts and glands of the host difference females are uh, females are longer than male females 65 to 100 mm in length males 40 mm in length and uh, is female more or less straight its posterior end uh, in the case of male posterior end curve curve bears and uh, two unequal sides spicules also there then life cycle after copulation uh, in the lymphatic system the female lays egg copulation uh, i already explained to you and that uh, eggs for taste eggs hatch into small larva that larva is called a microphylaria microphylaria and the cuticle of microphylaria is very thin and straight uh, striations are present in the cuticle the head end of that worm explaining about this microphylaria head end of the uh worm is microphylarial worm is blunt and bears a clear cephalic space means a small space is present on the uh, anterior end and also an oral stylet is present oral stylet also present and or uh, an is also present an i uh, that anal opening is situated where some distance behind the posterior anal region is also there some distance away from the posterior and then this what happens in the microphyll area it migrate from the lymph vessel that microphyll area uh, now exists in the lymphatic system of the host from the lymphatic uh, system it en enters to the uh, blood vascular system that means blood vessels and uh, in the blood vessel it remains as such no further development is happening because uh, further development for this worm happens only after it reaches its intermediate host that is the mosquito and in uh, in the while in the blood of the human it uh, show diurnal periodicity means it's uh, during day time 
it leaves in uh, deep blood vessel deep blood vessels means the blood vessels that present inside deeper portion of the body and during night time that uh, larvae microfilaria migrate to the superficial means blood vessels seen on the surface of the body uh, why it is migrating to the superficial blood vessel then only uh, when a mosquito come and bite this person it can enter into the body of mosquito that's why right. then when a mosquito bites that host that worm enters in the body of that mosquito and in the body of the mosquito further development is happening for the microfilaria the microfilaria migrate uh, from the mouth of the mosquito through its gut and reaches its thoracic muscles um, and uh, eventually its proboscis proboscis means it's a region that uh, the mosquito used to suck the blood the larva now has the length of 1.5 mm while it is inside the body of the mosquito then it is ready to transmit to get inside the body of another host that is the human that is the definite host when such an infected mosquito happened to bite a man it was and happened to my bite a man that microfilaria can reach the blood of that man from this blood capillary microfilaria migrate to the lymphatic system in the lymphatic system itself is the home for that worm after reaching the lymphatic system it develops into a adult that is the life cycle then regarding the pathogenicity Uh, it is not that much pathogenic. In a severe infection, it can block the lymph vessels and also can cause inflammations for the um, um, uh, lymph vessels and can cause fever. And also, it can block the lymph vessels. And by blocking, uh, it causes enlargement of the body parts. Uh, okay. Uh, that ha and that enlargement we are usually found in the case of legs, hands, uh, then uh, mammary gland, everything. This mand, I don't know. Ah, elephantiasis. It's a case of this infection. Uh, next, uh, preventive me measures. Ah, uh, to avoid mosquito bites. By that way, we can avoid this. Uh, and also eradication mosquito. Uh, for that uh, we can use some drugs diethyl carbamazine and also metronidazole metronidazole is another drug with this we finish this chapter thank you